In the early morning hours of June 14, 2007, a man flagged down a pickup truck along a frontage road near I-55 in Will County, Illinois. The man was bleeding and told the man in the truck that, quote, I think my wife shot me. The police were immediately called and responded to the scene along with EMS. The shot man was identified as Christopher Vaughn. He was bleeding from his thigh and left wrist, and despite the fact that he was harmed, he was very calm and displayed no signs of panic. He explained that his wife and children were down the road in the family SUV, which he had exited after being injured. He no longer remembered how he was injured, he said. However, when the police went to check out the parked SUV, they found the deceased bodies of Christopher's wife, Kimberly, and three children. So what truly happened that morning along the highway? Christopher was born September 26, 1974, in Darden Prairie, Missouri. His parents were Gail and Pierre Vaughn. He was one of three boys and raised enjoying outdoor activities such as camping and hiking. He is a graduate of Francis Howell High School, where he played soccer. Kimberly Phillips was born December 12, 1972, to Dell and Susan Phillips in St. Charles, Missouri. She was one of three daughters. Kimberly had a twin sister, Jennifer, and another sister named Elizabeth. She was a 1991 graduate of St. Charles West High School. She was athletic and played volleyball. She started dating Christopher Vaughn, and later in 1994, they got married. Christopher's family was less affluent than the Phillips family, which Gail and Pierre say caused tensions between the families early on. However, Christopher and Kimberly seemed happy and welcomed their first child just months after they married. Their first child, Abigail, also known as Abby, was born December 15, 1994. Abby was a gifted artist and loved to play soccer. She loved to read and illustrate her own stories. She was involved in the drama club and ran track at her middle school. On March 12, 1996, Abby became a big sister to Cassandra. She was a natural leader and loved animals. She also played the clarinet in her school's band. The Vaughn family was completed on April 19, 1999, when their son Blake was born. Blake was a gifted student and avid reader. He loved Cardinals baseball and being a Cub Scout. In fact, the girls had also been Girl Scouts, with both parents serving as troop leaders at some point. Kimberly was very involved in her children's education and often volunteered in their classrooms. She was primarily a stay-at-home mother when her children were little, while Christopher built a private security firm specializing in cybersecurity. The family lived in Washington State for several years where Chris grew his business. The family enjoyed the outdoor activities readily available in Washington, such as hiking and camping. In 2005, the family left Washington and Chris's private business when he accepted a job at another cybersecurity firm with a salary of around $200,000 a year. With Chris's new job and salary came a large family home on a cul-de-sac in a nice neighborhood in Oswego, Illinois. The home costed over $400,000 but Christopher's salary provided well enough for his family to buy the house. With the children now all in school, Kimberly decided to take online classes to pursue a degree in criminal justice through the University of Phoenix. Kimberly graduated approximately two weeks before her death in 2007. Kimberly was very social and involved in her community. Neighbors remember her as an excellent mother and kind person. Chris's new job involved frequent business trips to Mexico and Canada. This time apart put strain on the marriage, which was further complicated by infidelity when Chris had an affair while in Mexico for business. Kim also had been suffering migraine headaches that required different medications to control. Despite the challenges in their marriage, Chris and Kim seemed to be committed to their family and were planning a romantic trip for their anniversary on June 15th. Chris said that the couple decided to take their children to a water park for some family time on June 14, 2007. They left in the early morning hours for the road trip to Springfield, Illinois. Gail and Pierre Vaughn would later explain on a podcast how they received a call from a reporter on the morning of June 14. The reporter was asking questions about her son Christopher and his wife Kimberly. Confused, Gail asked why they wanted to know about her son and daughter-in-law. 
That is how they learned that their son's family had been killed. Devastated, Gail and Pierre left their St. Louis area home and headed towards the Vaughn home in Oswego, Illinois. At that time, police had not named any suspects in the case, but indicated that the crime appeared to be domestic in nature and no one outside the family was suspected of being involved. Kim and Chris's neighbors and family expressed disbelief at the tragedy that occurred. Meanwhile, Christopher Vaughn was being questioned by police following medical treatment for his wounds. Chris told investigators that while he was driving to the water park along I-55, Kimberly said she was nauseated. According to Chris, this happened frequently related to her migraine headaches. He said he stopped at a rest stop, but Kim did not want to get out there because she was shy. He said he couldn't remember where he ended up pulling over, but the SUV was found on a frontage road off the highway near a wooded area. He said he exited the vehicle to check the luggage rack. After returning to the vehicle, he realized his leg was bleeding, exited the vehicle, and walked down the frontage road to find help. At this point, he showed no concern or emotions regarding his wife and children. He spoke of them in present tense and did not ask where they were until after police informed him they were deceased. At that point, he started to speak of his wife and children in the past tense, something the defense would later say would be hard to fake. Chris admitted to owning a gun and being at the gun range the day before the murders, but indicated his gun was at his home in Oswego. He admitted to having an affair while in Mexico, but stated he and Kim were trying to repair their marriage. He was planning a romantic trip that very weekend to fix the relationship. Chris Vaughn denied killing his family, but showed little to no emotion when investigators put pictures of their dead bodies in front of him, raising their suspicions. In subsequent interviews in the days following the murders, Chris indicated that Kim was not capable of killing her children, but he believed she had shot him when he re-entered the vehicle that morning. He claimed that he could not remember the events clearly. He said after he was shot, his mind shut off, and he ran. He also stated this is why he failed to use the cell phone inside the family vehicle to call 911. Although not cleared as a suspect, Christopher Vaughn was not under arrest at this point and remained free to plan the funerals of his 34-year-old wife Kimberly and their three children. In the days following the murders, investigators searched the Oswego home of the Vaughn family, confiscating computers and other evidence. Neighbors and the press began to speculate as to what happened with many pointing the finger at Christopher. Most of who knew the family described Chris as quiet and mild-mannered, even an introvert. There was no history of domestic violence calls or anger issues. According to Christopher's family, however, Kim was easily angered, although there's not much evidence to support this claim. On the morning of June 23, 2007, Chris, his family, and Kim's family gathered in a St. Charles, Missouri funeral home before services for the family began. According to Chris's parents, there was a noticeable divide and uncomfortableness between the two families. Before the services could even begin, police placed Christopher Vaughn under arrest for the murders of his wife and children. Chris's parents expressed outrage because Chris was not allowed to attend the services despite not yet being convicted of a crime. The Vaughn family accuses Will County State's attorney James Glasgow of strategically arresting Vaughn at the funeral home to take advantage of the media coverage. However, Glasgow responded with, quote, The moment I have probable cause and believe I can prove my case, then I move forward, insisting the timing was coincidental. Chris's parents described how difficult that day was because not only had they lost their daughter-in-law and grandchildren, but now their son was arrested and unable to grieve his family. Furthermore, they felt the Phillips family showed a lack of concern for them as they celebrated Chris's arrest. The family of Kim said this to the media, We are heartened that police worked so quickly. We are glad her name has been cleared for any responsibility for the deaths of her children. We are very sorry for Chris, both for the legal process he faces and for the sense of guilt he's going to feel when he realizes what he's done to destroy these four innocent lives. Christopher Vaughn was charged with eight counts of first-degree murder and pleaded not guilty to all charges. He insisted that his wife shot him and must have killed their children before committing suicide. 
he maintained the claim that he had memory lapses from that day, leading to a defense theory that he had traumatic amnesia. While awaiting trial, investigators determined that Christopher Vaughn has a $1 million insurance policy on Kimberly. Christopher remained behind bars for five years while he awaited trial. At first, Christopher was facing the death penalty. This meant he had access to capital defense funds meant to ensure defendants facing the ultimate punishment are given every opportunity to defend themselves. With these funds, Chris had two attorneys working to build a case for his innocence. The defense theory was that Kimberly was experiencing personality changes related to nortriptyline and Topamax that she took for migraine headaches. As a result, the defense said that she shot Christopher, killed her children, and then committed suicide. The gunshot trajectory seemed to support this theory, indicating that the children were shot from the passenger side of the vehicle. However, before this case could go to the trial, Illinois abolished the death penalty. As a result, the state of Illinois was no longer paying for the high-priced attorneys for the defense. Chris's parents stated that he was assigned a public defender, and the defense's case was severely damaged by losing his original attorneys, who required $250,000 to complete the trial. It remains unclear, however, why Christopher didn't hire his own attorney, given he seemed to have the financial means to do so. The trial of Christopher Vaughn began in 2012. With heavy press coverage, the prosecution began to present its case. They presented evidence that Christopher purchased the gun used in the murders and practiced shooting at a shooting range on June 6th and June 13th of 2007. Emails from Kimberly's accounts were presented and showed her life typically revolved around going to school and taking care of her children. Several witnesses testified that Christopher was introverted and rarely showed emotion. Evidence was presented in relation to the interviews Chris gave to police in the days following the murders. This evidence included his affair in Mexico. He had also admitted to trust issues in his marriage related to that incident of infidelity and his tendency to go to strip clubs. The investigators provided testimony on Chris's lack of emotion during the interview process. Forensic evidence included a firearms expert who stated that the muzzle of the gun was very close less than six inches from Christopher's thigh when the shot was fired. He also had four bullet holes found in his jacket. The scientist testified that these holes were consistent with the passage of a single bullet made when the jacket had been wrapped or layered around the gun before it was fired. However, the defense challenged this, and the expert admitted it was possible that the holes were caused by separate shots. Stephen Willett was the next witness for the prosecution. Stephen lives near Ottawa, Canada and had met Vaughn in an internet chat room in 2006. Stephen and Chris exchanged a long series of emails and online messages regarding living in the remote wilderness, camping, and survival skills. The emails tended to indicate that the defendant was frustrated with his life and wanted to live permanently in the Canadian wilderness. Chris had allegedly even asked the witness to help him fake his own death, but Willett was uncomfortable with that. In an email dated May 23, 2007, Chris mentioned someone named Maya that he may want to bring along with him to Canada. She was later identified Maya Drake and presented as the next witness. She was an exotic dancer who claimed Chris frequented the club she worked at. She said he told her he wanted to leave his wife and live in the Canadian wilderness. She testified that Chris said that he was going to leave his wife everything, that she was going to get what she deserved, and she was not going to see it coming. Another dancer testified that Chris claimed to be single with no children and spent over $4,000 on her in the weeks before the murders, contrasting Chris's claims of being committed to working on his marriage. Dr. Larry Bloom, a pathologist, testified about the findings of the autopsies. He testified that the gun was in contact with Kimberly's chin at the time it was fired. She had one gunshot from under her chin and this was a fatal wound. Each of the children had been shot twice from approximately 18 to 24 inches away. He was questioned on cross-examination if it was possible Kim committed suicide, stating he could not rule that out. He also testified that she had nortriptyline and Topamax in her system. The nortriptyline was near toxic levels, but he said this could have been caused by redistribution of substances that can occur after death. 
Nortriptyline is an antidepressant medication that carries a warning as it can increase suicidal thoughts. Topamax carries a similar warning, supporting the defense's theory of the crime. Another expert witness testified about where the blood and DNA evidence was found at the scene. Chris Vaughn's blood was found on his jacket, Kimberly's seatbelt and buckle, the passenger side of the center console, the driver's seat, and Kimberly's clothing. Kim's blood was found on the right lower portion of the defendant's jacket, the right side of the driver's seat back, the center console, and her own clothing. If Christopher had left the vehicle while his family was still alive, how did Kim's blood get on his jacket? An expert in shooting scene reconstruction testified that the pistol was semi-automatic and had fully cycled after the last shot and was ready to be refired. According to the expert, in order for this to happen, the gun had to have been fully supported through its firing action. He went on to explain that in cases of suicide, the gun is often not supported through a full cycle and jams. He believed this finding was inconsistent with a suicide. The gun did not have any blood splatter consistent with suicide, no blood at all on the trigger guard, and Kimberly's hands only had one small drop of blood on them. This finding also supported the prosecution's theory that Chris Vaughn had committed this heinous crime and attempted to frame his wife. This theory was also strengthened when an article was found in his home about staging crime scenes. The prosecution continued its case presenting forensic evidence that indicated the wounds Christopher suffered were contact or near contact wounds, contrary to the theory that Kim shot him from the passenger side of the vehicle. Furthermore, Blood smearing indicates that something smeared Kim's blood from the center console shortly after she was shot. The state concluded this was from Chris reaching over her to shoot his children from the passenger side of the car. The defense fired back stating there was a transfer stain of Chris's blood on Kim's thumb, presenting this as evidence that Kim unbuckled her own seatbelt after Chris was shot. The defense also presented an email Kim wrote to Chris a week before her death stating she had informed her doctor of a big personality change and anxiety change. Medical professionals who treated Kim testified that she suffered from migraines, high blood pressure, and stress. However, they were not aware of any suicidal or homicidal thoughts. Crime scene reconstructionist Tom Bevel testified for the defense that it would have been possible for Kim to shoot the defendant, children, and commit suicide. However, on cross-examination, Bevel admitted that the evidence at the scene did not support Chris's claims that he left the vehicle before his family was shot. The defense relied strongly on the theory that Kimberly's medications caused her to commit murder and suicide. Alongside all of this, Chris maintained his innocence. Christopher Vaughn was found guilty on all counts after less than an hour of jury's deliberations. He was sentenced to four life sentences without the possibility of parole. There isn't a punishment that fits this crime. You could lock him up for 500 lifetimes, and it would not compensate the victims in this case and the family members, stated the state's attorney James Glasgow after the sentencing. Several questions remain that point to Chris Vaughn's guilt. Why didn't he call 911 from the car? Why was the family visiting a water park three hours from their home when there are multiple water parks closer to home? Why did the family leave at 5 a.m. when the water park which opens at 10 a.m., is only a three-hour drive. Why would he leave his children with Kim if she had just shot him? Why did he show such little concern for his children or their whereabouts when being treated for his own injuries? Why were they using a luggage rack for a day trip? Why would you stop on a frontage road in a remote area? Why would Kim be too shy to use a rest stop if she was sick? Gail and Pierre Vaughn would later go on a podcast called Murder in Illinois, where they, an investigating innocence group, which is an advocacy group that fights wrongful convictions, would talk about the case. Kim and her family were presented in a poor light with jabs at their personalities that were not relevant to the case. Towards the end of the podcast, Vaughn's parents share a letter Chris wrote after he pulled back from the podcast. He now claims he never lost his memory and remembers that morning well. He states that Kim killed the children when he was outside the car, then shot him and told him this was his fault before committing suicide. A crime scene investigator spoke on the podcast that he originally felt this was a murder-suicide and Kim was the shooter, 
but he was removed from the case after expressing this opinion. It should also be noted that this investigator was also the lead investigator at the crime scene of Kathleen Savio, whose death was originally ruled accident despite several pieces of evidence indicating it was a homicide. Her death was later ruled a homicide in 2007, shortly after the Vaughn family murders. Perhaps his expertise was not appreciated in this case due to being discredited in the Savio case. Investigating Innocence has a webpage showing photos of the bullet trajectory in the vehicle that is supposed to demonstrate Kim was the shooter. However, the shot appears to have come from above where the crime scene investigator demonstrates in another photo on the site, further supporting the prosecution's theory of the crime. The trajectory appears to be from high on the passenger side and angled downward to the back seat, supporting the theory that Christopher fired the shots that killed his children. As a result of this podcast and investigating Innocence's efforts to show Kimberly Vaughn as the shooter, there are currently efforts being made to prove Christopher Vaughn's innocence. Gail and Pierre Vaughn recently appeared on the Dr. Phil show, on which they explained Christopher does not want a retrial because he doesn't believe he can get a fair trial. However, the Vaughn family is currently petitioning the governor for clemency so he can come home. Pierre Vaughn claimed on the show and on the Murder in Illinois podcast that Christopher was mentally and physically tortured in jail while awaiting his trial. The tragic events of June 14, 2007, took the lives of four people and let two families shattered. Unresolved questions, such as the motive behind the alleged murders, the inconsistencies in witness testimonies, and the mysterious circumstances surrounding Christopher Vaughn's arrest and subsequent conviction, continue to fuel debates and speculations, even to this day. So, what do you think truly happened to the Vaughn family? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.